So this is a video I've been blowing off making for a while now. What this is here is a Dell PowerEdge C6300 series chassis with four nodes. The nodes here are the C6320 variant. And this is quite the server. One of these nodes is basically better than what I'm using right now as it is. And each of these nodes are configured with dual Xeon E5 2640V3 CPUs that are 2.6 gigahertz with eight cores each with a 90 watt TDP, which is impressive. <laughs> um, they have the LSI 2008 controller and they have iDRAC 8 Enterprise license and then the memory is 8 sticks of 16 gig DDR4 and the speed of that is 2133 mega transfers a second so each one of these nodes 234 has 256 gigabytes of RAM for a total of one terabyte between the nodes and I'm looking forward to having some fun with this. It's going to take me some time to figure out how I'm going to set it up. I probably need to buy some more flash drives and then I don't know if I'm going to run ESXi on it or maybe I'll do Proxmox. I just I don't have the licensing for the vSphere so I can't do any uh, vMotion tasks where I'm moving virtual machines around. I'm not sure how I'd even be able to <laughs> really do anything like uh, intensive with this basically, but I kind of want to see what it's like because I've never played with a multi-node server before. Um, also worth noting those power supplies there in the back. I'm going to grab one here real quick. Alright, so here's one of the power supplies and one of the downfalls with these power supplies is the fact that they're 200 volt only. So they'll do 200 to 240 volt AC at 10 amps with an output power of 1600 watts per power supply. These are also capable of doing 240 volt DC which I thought was kind of interesting. I don't see too much of that. I've tore apart a few like IBM storage assemblies that were DC only which was kind of neat. And I'm just going to adjust my camera down here a little bit. This particular unit was only equipped with five caddies per node. And unfortunately, some of the caddies came damaged from the previous owner when they removed their drives. Also, they didn't leave the screws, but that's typical for my line of work. Most people, when they remove their drives, they just throw the screws in the trash because too much work to set them aside with the unit. So I'm not sure what I'm going to populate this with for drives yet. I have a bunch of 146 gig SAS drives that I'd probably use. I could steal some of my uh, solid state drives from my pile for laptop refurbishing, but this is going to be a project that's going to take me a while to work with since there's going to be a lot more setup involved than a traditional server. One thing I noticed that's kind of neat on the front of this is on the rack ears. Let's see if I can get a good zoom on that. There we go. So each rack ear has a set of buttons for each node. So this is node one here. That'd be the power button and that'd be the indicator light to make the node blink so you can tell what you're looking at. I don't know on the back of the node what the light looks like. I would assume it's going to be similar to the traditional Dell servers. Oh yeah. Oops. So, I'll lift it up get a better angle. Oops, but I'm off frame. Sorry about that. There we go. So there's the uh, indicator light there, the little button. These do have two 10 gigabit SFP plus ports on them along with the management port, a USB port, and a VGA output. 
I'm not sure what the micro USB port does. I have not read any of the documentation on this yet. I also thought it would be fun to show the inside under the cover. There's not much to see, but I don't know if there's any, I couldn't, I didn't look very hard, but I didn't see if there's any videos basically of under the cover. So I'm gonna to change to a better camera angle for that. All right, so I got the cover loose. Just pull that off. And I gotta find somewhere nice to set it. So there's not much to see under the cover. These fans are not like the traditional Dell fans where they're hot swappable. You have to disconnect this wire here. There we go. Little six pin connector and then you can remove the fan assembly. I'm really surprised how small these fans are considering the amount of airflow that this unit's gonna have to move. I haven't powered it on yet so I suspect it's gonna be extremely loud. Also kind of an interesting thing about the way this was designed, this backplane isn't like a lot of your Dell server backplanes would be, where it just has a SAS connector coming out of it. They have it broken out into individual SATA cables. So potentially, I guess, a person could rearrange and change the bay numbers if they wanted to. Don't know why you would, but that would be a possibility. And then these SAS cables just plug into the side over here. It looks like the backplane connectors are basically a long strip PCB and it kind of breaks out into a wider kind of squarish in the back. And the power delivery on this is pretty significant. I'm surprised how big these wires are. I think, oh actually it says right there, yeah they're 8 gauge wires. And it looks like there's a set of four for each level. So there's two levels of backplanes. Along with there's some supplemental power cables that go to the backplane for the drives. I imagine there's not much that's meant to be serviceable inside of here. Since these aren't hot swappable like the traditional Dell fans would be. But yeah, pretty sparse on the inside. Most of the compute is being done on the nodes and everything else is just power power delivery and backplane. So hopefully I will have some time to get this in my rack. They did not make a ready rail kit for this, which is disappointing. Basically from what I can tell, you just slide the chassis in on some they're not really rails. It's kind of like with the APC battery backups slide on where it's just a bent bracket that screws into the to the rack. So I have to figure out how I'm going to mount that. Luckily I added 220 to my new rack that I got. So I have that APC PDU. I think that circuit should have enough power to run this. I don't think this is going to go anywhere near the 10 amps per power supply based on the history with my R720s because even under load I have not been able to push my R720s over 400 watts with both my CPUs maxed out and both of my Tesla graphics cards maxed out so we'll see what happens I can't make any guarantees of when I'm gonna get to this but it's something I've been kicking around that I've been wanting to play with because I've never had a chance to try a multi-node server, but thanks for watching.